Hey, it's a boy. Have a cigar. Oh, it's a girl. Oh, have some candy and flowers. Hi, son. Look at those muscles. Wow. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Isn't she dainty? Hello, sweetheart. Gee, I hope he doesn't rip it apart. I hope it's not too heavy for her. He stood up. He's strong as an ox. She's standing. What a little lady. Any jobs in the factory will be in the cutting room, learning to be a cutter. Because there's not really any other jobs for a man in the factory itself. Um, I know there's the office job, but I mean, there's only uh, all mainly women that work in there. Job, yeah. What about a typist? How do you compare that skill to, to your skill? Well, I should imagine it's pretty hard being a typist, but there again, once you can type, you can type. I mean, in cutting, you get, as Jim said, you get all different types of material, you know, mm. some, some stretches, some shrinks, you know, mm. moves all over the place, you know. Mm. I think they do, in fact, realise how skillful they are. I think they probably feel that basically they're a woman, and most women do some sewing at some stage in their lives. And I think they relate it more to, more to, to it being a woman's function to sew like it is to iron, like it is to cook. One of the ways in which a job gets to be called skilled is when a group of people, which is almost invariably a group of men, get to have the organisation and the power to be able to define it that way and to be able to convince the employer that this job is more skilled than another job. And trade unions have obviously played a part in that. You know? Okay, Tom. Hello. 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 